Good morning everyone, I'm Lee Chantal from Viva La Vegan and um, today I'm giving a talk on marketing yourself and veganism online. So I thought I'd just go through my background first so you know why I'm actually speaking today, why they asked me to speak. <coughs> and I'm oh, sorry about throwing my, um, my presentation a bit. We'll be up and running over very soon. But maybe I'll put it up on a slide share after so you can see this. Okay, so I've been involved in marketing and promotion for a while, and um, my previous life was going to be a rock star. So I've promoted <laughs> my own music and CDs and stuff that I've released since about 2001. And um, I also put on Brisbane's first vegan environmental festival, Green Earth Festival and Green Earth Day, when I came to them in 2010 and 2011. So I've been involved with promotion and marketing for quite a while. Um, my background now, what I focus on, I um, have been doing content creation and running social media campaigns for businesses from about 2010 as well. Um, nowadays I focus more on consulting and um, giving people information, like trying to educate people and show them how to do things instead of doing it for them, because I get more out of doing that. And I've been doing that for a while, and here's some of the things I give lectures and workshops and consulting coaching on. So I also I give a lot of talks on the vegan health and lifestyle, but my job is giving consulting in regards to marketing online and social media. Online um, etiquette's one of my favourite things, and I'm working on some more programs for that that you'll see in the new year. Um, hopefully you've all heard of my website called vivalavegan.net, so that's been going for um, over 10 years, started in 2005, and one of my friends recently called me the most prolific vegan blogger in Australia, so I'm going to use that, I'm going to start putting that in the cards or something. So um, there's over 10 years worth of information on that website, so there's articles, blogs, interviews, how-to videos, um, recipes, FAQs, heaps of stuff. And yeah, I've been talking about the vegan lifestyle for about 10 years as well. I've released quite a few books. My latest one is a, vegan, a, a book on vegan athletes. So there's over 100 interviews with inspiring athletes and exercise enthusiasts and fitness fanatics from all over the world. And um, they're all different disciplines. And that's my fourth book. Um, here's my other ones here. And I've also been featured in quite a few other books. And I've got a heap of e-books. Now today, what I'm going to go over is marketing online in particular, and I'm just going to go through some of the things you should be aware of about online, and then we're going to go through some examples of maybe how to be a bit more mindful of what you're saying and how you act online with people. And yeah, I love interactions, so please, if you, if you can't understand or if you'd like to say how great my dress looks today, just yell it out. <laughs> 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 And I love photos too, so please do <laughs> take photos, um, tag me online, and yeah, we'll get along. Um, so yeah, there's so many tools we can use nowadays to promote things. There's so many things we can use. Years ago, it was a bit harder. Nowadays, so many options, opportunities, and everything's easier. You know, it's affordable. People can do a lot more online. So these are the things we're going to sort of focus on today. And social media is amazing to do. And by utilising all the things that you're good at, all the things you're passionate at and your skills, this is a great way to promote whatever you're passionate about, whether it's veganism, animal rights, or even your business or your brand. So I really want you to be encouraged and I hope that I can give you some um, goals and something to achieve and feel empowered to be able to promote what you need to do from the end of this. And there's a hell of a lot of social media sites nowadays. There's hundreds, and you can't be you can't be on all of them. It's just not you know you just won't sleep. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened before. This is what used to happen before. So someone would write a press release, say I'm about to release something new. I'm going to write a press release about it. It would be targeted to the media. Someone would then write an article, and then it would be read by consumers. So think about that. And then we're comparing it to this. So social media now is linking people. And whatever is shared online, that's when people are trusting someone. That's when they'll read something. That's when they'll buy something. 
So think about the differences now. And if you have a look at these two diagrams, can everyone see the, the slides? Yeah. So if you think about information before was quite scarce, now quite abundant. Quite, there's probably too much information. So think about those things when you're trying to promote something um, online. Yeah. Now, why is social media important? Why is it great? Here's some, here's some reasons. So it's really important to show people processes of things. So not just the outcome. So one of my friends, Jessica Bailey, she just opened the cruelty free shop here in Brisbane. And one of the things she did was take photos of the setup of the store. Look, we've got the shelves up today. Look, we're packing the stock. Things like that. If you keep those things in mind, so people are like, oh, I remember when they were putting the floorboards down. I remember when they painted the walls that green colour. And you're more attached to the outcome and you're getting involved. That's what you want people to do. So it's mostly cost saving nowadays, but we'll go into that a tiny bit so later. We don't have too much time for that. But some, in some cases, like Facebook, you have to pay to play nowadays. And so it's more engaging, and people are focusing on a less of a strict hierarchy, like before that diagram I showed you. Now the information can go to anyone. And um, it's great to be able to build your followers and to really build a community. Everything's cheap. Cameras are cheap. Um, some uh, computers and laptops are cheap. You know, everyone's probably got a camera in their pocket or in their bag at the moment that you can easily film something, you can easily upload it. So these things are quite cheap. And it's really social media influences popular opinion. So, and it really can spread to a lot of people. And so people nowadays, they're not looking to say, you know, government, teachers, churches, parents, schools. They're looking to someone that has some sort of scope online. And that's what they're saying. Whether or not that's a good thing, and you know, the loudest people or most vocal people and celebrities, whether or not it's a good thing that people are following, following those sort of people, that's what's up there. And here's just some stats of the amount of people that are using these social media channels. So have a look at Facebook, 1.71 billion users. So whether or not you like Facebook, I can't stand it. You need to be on there because your um, community or the people you're trying to attract will be on Facebook. Can everyone please raise your hand if you want to say Here's the actual top um, social platforms of Australian stats. So Facebook's still the top with 41%, down to Tumblr at 6 But you've also got Facebook Messenger and Skype. Google Plus, which I love, but no one seems to care about in Australia. LinkedIn, Twitter, and I think they're all um, mess those red ones, Messenger and chat apps. So that's what people use on phones. So be aware, a lot of people are interacting and doing Do stuff on phones or on apps nowadays. Now, what you need to do when you're trying to share stuff online, when you're trying to work out a schedule or a campaign, you need to focus, what, focus on what you want to do. And you really need to commit to these things. You need to create content, which is really important. And your own branded content is the best. You need to schedule it or organize some sort of schedule that you're going to stick to. And then you need to post this, this information. And most importantly, out of all of those, is interact. So the word social media, what do you think is the most important part of that? Social. Social, yes. And everyone tends to forget about that nowadays. Everyone's just giving all that information to people, but no one is taking the time to interact with people. So if that's the only thing you learned from me today, please interact a bit more. Now you want to share high quality shareable information that's your own brand or your own stuff. That's really important. That's really um, in, you know, imperative for people to see that you're providing value to people. Okay? And people want to go to you, to your channel, to your page and say, oh, this is the place that I go to to get this, the information in regards to whether it's veganism, animal rights, AFL, whatever. It's like where you go to get that information. And you want to be sharing relevant and up-to-date information. You don't want to be sharing the stuff every single other blog is sharing or every single other page is sharing. Think outside the square. Think about being creative. It needs to be regular. You need to be sharing things on um, that are meaningful and has some sort of 
it relates to whatever you're trying to promote. Okay? So visuals are very important. What were you going to say? Maybe. Wait, you said regularly. Well, I would suggest for a start, three times a week is very important. So Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, that would be the, the least amount you have to do. But recently there's been some studies that are saying if you're not posting every 24 hours, then you're going lower and lower down on what's being shown. Yeah, so that's a bit scary. Isn't it? Can you there's lots of different times depending on what channel you're using. So I can't, I don't have enough time to go through that today, but I suggest you have a look at that online. So if you're looking at um, Facebook in particular, there's around one. But um, yeah, just have a look. Can you overshare? Yeah, definitely. What's like, oversharing? Um, too many selfies? No. Um, <laughs> so oversharing, I, I would suggest if you focus on the stuff that's important and relevant and your own content, that that's a good that's a good thing. If you if you're spamming a lot of people, buy my ebook, like, like my photo, like that sort of stuff. That's oversharing. That's too much. You want to be giving people some reason to come to you and some sort of information they're getting out of it. Not you just trying to sell something or you just trying to promote yourself. So if you're giving. Um, important information you're sharing important stuff that someone can learn from that they can get something from that's what you need to focus on if you can't be doing that if you've only got one of those things a week that's better than spamming someone every day well I, I administer the page for Mark Pearson uh, okay. MLC so yep. we have an abundance of original material yeah that's great and yeah. people send us stuff mm -hmm. so we can I can post three times a day yeah to and see so what people like and what they engage yeah. with. That's and there's so many um, analytical stuff that you can have a look at now and see who's like this. Oh, people prefer this. And um, <coughs> I'll get back to the slides. But my my point in here is for more visual stuff, so that gets shared more. So if you've got photos of Mark speaking, if you've got photos of him giving a talk, if you've got videos of him, if you've got quotes that you can create into a visual from some of his speeches, that's really important. They'd be the things I'd be focusing yeah. on sharing. Well, so 10,000 hits from his last video. Yeah, cool, there you go. So yeah, videos, um, photos, quotes are awesome, in particular if you create them into a visual. So that would be what I would um, what I'd focus on. There's a pick monkey if no one's heard of that pickmonkey.com that's where you can make your own visuals so if you don't have any graphic experience whatsoever you can just put photos on there put some text on there and even um, uh, PowerPoint's good and I use um, I use another uh, program on my Mac um, Keynote so if you think about that sort of way that you can create a slideshow you can sometimes use that as a good way to create visuals as well and um, yeah, like I said before, your own content is very important. Whether or not you brand it and put a watermark on it or something like that, that's really important to focus on those sort of things. You want to become an expert in your industry and you want people to trust you and come to you for the information that you're sharing. That's really important. Yeah, you want people to say, I can't get this anywhere else, so that's why I'm coming to this person. And you know, I've said, you know, make something new every day. And that's just, I, you know, I'm a creative people, I encourage people to be creative all the time. So whether or not you're writing every day or um, drawing every day, singing every day, do something creative every day. So I would, you know, try and think of that aspect of creating something new online. <clears throat> and, you know, your own digital assets are very important. So what that means is something that you own, that you have control of over so social media that's controlled by facebook twitter google plus instagram youtube they own whatever you post on that they can use whatever you post on that for whatever reason if you have your own blog if you have your own website you're sharing information to those channels that's your own assets that's what you own and i would encourage people to be creating their own ebooks or videos as well so for an example would be um I did some FAQs, so vegan FAQs on my vegan.net um, YouTube channel. And um, so I had the video. From the video, I got someone to transcribe it, so I've got the text, and then I'm, going, I'm creating an ebook from that. And then I've also um, detached the audio from the video, so I've got audio. So from just one video, I 
I've got visual, I've got audio, I've got text, and then it can become an ebook. So think along that mindset. Do, does everyone get that? Think how one thing can go to many different areas. So if you can get in that sort of mentality, that will really help you. And you can use that forever. Um, if you post something on, on your own, personal digital media like, a, like a, a web page and then share it to Facebook. Does Facebook then own it or because it comes from you is it still your material? It's your own intellectual property always will be because you created it right. but they will own the post that you posted. Right. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so yeah all these different things so if you can focus on those like articles, blogs, content that you've created. And you need to be really um, proactive with engagement. Like this, follow me, what do you think, comment, you know, I, you know, I want some questions, um, give answers as well, make sure you respond. Um, when you're just starting out, or even nowadays, like if you're sharing something someone else has created, tag them, you know, share information. We want to be creating a community and um, connecting with other people and get email addresses, it's really important. If you have a blog, if you have a brand, you wanna be creating email addresses. There was a um, quote, um, one of my friends, I gave a talk in Washington DC a few years ago about Twitter in particular, bless you. And um, I said that um, online, something on Twitter lasts 15 minutes, um, something on Facebook an hour, and then an hour to two hours, and then an email will last as long as until that person deletes the email. So email is very important. Having mail mailing lists is very important. People forget these things and we all get caught up in sharing things on Instagram that we forget about all that stuff. So yeah, um, like I was saying, we want people to interact more. We don't want to just see you posting and you just post, 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 post. Someone's asked a question and no one's answered it. I see that so often with people. And um, these are some of the things that maybe ask yourself before you post something. Is it beneficial? Will someone get something out of it? And is it shareable? So if you focus on those things all the time, that will help. And um, if you've got a few people, like say you're in a band or um, you've got a group of people that are working in a cafe together or um, managing someone's campaign, just break everything into pieces. Someone's in charge of something on Monday, someone's in charge of something else on Tuesdays. Just break it all down a bit. And um, I use a tool called Hootsuite, like the owl, and I would suggest that people use that too. So you can schedule updates. So I schedule Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus from there. And you change it a bit because Twitter's only <coughs> smaller text than you can have for the other ones. And um, you know, Instagram you have to use an image, the others you don't have to. Um, so I suggest that you schedule updates as much as you can. With Instagram, because it's an app, um, you still have to go onto your app to actually publish it, but you've got all that information that you can put across. And Facebook, you can do that now. So you can go on Facebook, post something, and then add the date when you want it to go and schedule it. So if you take a few hours a day or a few hours a week, a few hours a month and just go through and schedule everything you want for that week or that month, get into that habit, then you're not having to be online to all these things all the time. Um, and yeah, Google Analytics, see what people have actually been interacting with, what people really like, that's important. Um, and share whatever you share on one channel and somewhere else as well. Um, different ways that you can connect your own media is your website, your digital goods. Your earned media is like your social media or SEO, things like that. Your paid media is advertising. And here's some ideas for shareable content if anyone wants to take a photo of that bit of text. Um, creating conversations with people. Engaging or informing people. Sharing visuals. Linking to your own website. Engaging opinion, entertaining, and being inspiring to people. So if you break those sort of things down, if you're trying to work out, what am I going to create this week? What am I going to share this week? Maybe have a look at this. It's question, transcription, infograph, recipe, <coughs> asking for feedback, giving a presentation, or a quote from something. So there's some ideas.
and everything, something shared something different each day. So I like to break it down into different days of the week and different things for each day. So vlog on Tuesday, video on Thursday, things like that. Um, here's a lot of other ideas that you could do as well. Get involved if you're only just starting out. Maybe write some articles for some people for some other blogs. The lovely um, Douglas Leith just up here. Give us a wave, Doug. He's written a heap of um, articles for me, willabegin.net on the section, and I've had quite a few other article writers on that over the years as well. So focus on giving people information that they might need. Um, you really need to be consistent. You really need to commit to these things. And um, that's just in general life. I like people to be commit committed and consistent. Seems pretty easy to me, but everyone else seems to struggle with that idea. Um, so you need to be updating regularly. You need to be sharing stuff with people all the time. Sometimes writing to your soul, some people will seem to share. So you've got to be willing to do that sort of thing. You need to have good time management skills, know the topics that are up to date, just keep on top of all these sort of things. And um, remember that um, if you're, some people get very excited and write all these blogs or posts and then they post, you know, 20 times a day for a week and then there's nothing for three months. I want you to focus on at least one thing a week that's important and very um, information based and something shareable. One thing a week I think you can do and focus on that for as long as you can. Then we can add other things over time, but at least one good thing a week. Um, make sure you work out what you want to do, your goals, how often you can actually commit to these things. So I don't want you to be overwhelmed with everything, but be realistic of what you can commit to. Um, people said years ago that on social media, so if you're just creating a new social media channel and you're wanting to get people to interact with you, that it used to take six months to develop that position, an online position, and now they say it's more like one to two years. So if you compare that to having your own business, I think that's a good way that most people, it helps their head. So when you're just starting out with your new business, all these things. And I want you to really focus on creating our vegan tribe. Everyone seems to just think, I'm just gonna share stuff and I'm gonna be you know, the pyramid scheme seller of my brand. You know, I want people to focus about um, focus on um, creating the tribe and sharing with each other and learning from each other. That's what's more important. Um, some ideas that I want you to think about. Just because I'm saying this today doesn't mean I'm right. You know, and I want you to do your own research. Find out what's really true. Find out facts that are from reliable sources. I see so many people all the time posting vegan facts and food and health facts and some of them are not scientifically based whatsoever and I think that's really damaging to the movement in particular when people come to veganism to cure something and then they're not cured because they couldn't cure it and then they don't they don't stay vegan um, so think about how we can learn more do better and be better examples of compassion in action and um, so, yeah, like I said before, there's a lot of people who I notice online who have a lot of followers who are very loud, who are very aggressive, like to post selfies. And um, just because they've got the most followers, just because they're yelling the loudest, doesn't mean they're the most right, okay? Does everyone get that? All the most effective. All the most effective, exactly. So keep these things in mind. Don't be disheartened just because someone's got a lot of those followers, you know? Is there any way to gauge your effectiveness on social media? Well, um, like the return on investment stuff, so like the analytics and stuff I would suggest. Yeah, how many comments, what people are liking, different times, what you're sharing, different things that you're sharing. That's how you do it. But yeah, it can be a bit overwhelming if you're not used to doing it. It's like Facebook just calling their own analytics system, like yeah. Google, I saw the other day. Yeah, exactly. So you can go Three through that. Three pages mm -hmm. in the Yeah, exactly. So yeah, find out more about that if you're not, if you're not aware about it. Um, I just want to go through a few things today in regards to different things. So I like to give talks on ethics beyond the plate and people thinking about more than just food. So there's a few things I want you to think about in regards to what you're promoting online, in particular about veganism. So in regards to health, I'm just going to break it down into different 
different sections. I want you to think about these questions, whether or not you yell out the answers or whether you think about it later. So veganism, 20 years ago when I became vegan, it was very healthy. You know, there wasn't all this processed stuff and all this junk food and I didn't get to eat cake every day if I wanted. Um, so nowadays, if you think about the fact that veganism is not necessarily healthy anymore, should it still be promoted as a healthy diet? Should it be promoted as a cure-all? And um, how can we encourage people to be flexible and open to all healthful types of vegan diets? Because I see a lot of people, and particularly young girls, that are using veganism as a way to be very restrictive on their diet, and they're using that as an excuse to be restrictive. So we want to be encouraging people to be a bit more flexible because it's very important for me for people to become vegan, but it's more important that people stay vegan. So think about those things. How can we encourage long-term commitment to the lifestyle? And I don't want to just see white vegans everywhere that look a certain way. There's so many different types of vegans. There's so many people of colour that we need to be showing in mainstream media. So let's show those different types. Now in regards to the environment, um, as a vegan, we're not consuming, we're not um, giving a lot of like, greenhouse gases, we're not contributing to a lot of things that um, animal products contribute to in most cases. But I want you to think about where your food comes from, the growing processes, the packaging processes. A lot of people buy packaged stuff that comes from the US or the UK. What about the food miles that's associated with that? You know, what about food scarcity, food security? Do you support GMO, um, non-GMO stuff in season organic products? Think about these things. Think about what you're promoting to people. Are people able to buy these things? Are the things that you're promoting actually affordable to the majority of people? Because we want veganism to be inclusive to every single person, and no matter how much money they have, no matter where they fit in society. Um, and like, if you think about the clothes you wear, the shoes you wear, the bags you, you use, what are the ethics and conditions involved in creating those things? Um, how are they produced? People who made the things for you, did they get paid a fair wage? It might be vegan, but it might be made in China. It might be made in um, somewhere like that, in these factories that I personally would have ethical issues with. And, um, if you're defending one type of female body, say um, um, a cow's body, but you're using a female body in another way that's detrimental, do you think that's good enough? There's certain people that would do anything just to promote veganism and animal rights, and maybe we need to think a bit more about other people and how it might affect them. And how can we participate in other social justice movements and learn from other people? I think, um, you know, it's really important to, that just because someone's vegan or not vegan, that they can come and be an ally to our movement and help us. The LGBTQI community is a really good example. You know, a lot of people support them whether or not they're gay or lesbian. And how do we get that sort of mindset to bring our movement forward? Because we really need to be starting to think about these things. And yeah, we need to be thinking about being inclusive. Um, online, people are really mean to each other, I think. I don't understand that. And I think we need to be thinking how another person is. And I'd like to talk about privilege because people are not aware of these things sometimes and we can never understand or appreciate it sometimes until it's taken away so i want you to exercise compassion to people and try and see where someone else is coming from you don't know how they've been raised you don't know the things that they've had to deal with so please be nice and be compassionate online and um here's a quote that i want you to think about we all have choices but some people have much better choices than others. So for us, like an example would be, for me, when I went to Indonesia, I was giving a lot of talks a few years ago throughout Indonesia, showing people how to make some um, vegan cheese sauce. I'm using nutritional yeast. It's not something local Indonesian people can have or that they can afford. So how do, how do I go from that? I need to be thinking about how to make it affordable and inclusive so that people go, oh, it's not just this white, white diet that I'm never gonna be able to afford. 
So yeah, people can't, some people can't choose to not eat a particular food. Some people can't afford to buy new clothes, new vegan clothes, new shoes like that. Some people can't access transportation, afford transportation, afford to be able to come to events like this. That doesn't mean they're a lesser vegan or lesser activist. Some people think protests and demos like the pinnacle of animal activists, but some people can't physically or emotionally, mentally handle those things. Keep these things in mind. Some people don't feel comfortable amongst another sex or don't feel they belong as not people in the group don't even look at like them, you know? You want someone that looks like you. And some people don't feel that their opinion is valid enough to share it either. Um, I just wanted to mention black vegans because I see them used online a lot in a negative way and as props. So we want to be using and thinking about how other people are feeling when we're saying particular things, when we're using particular phrases, when we're comparing certain things like slavery, like rapes, things like this. How would someone that actually went through those processes feel if you were talking about things like this in quite a flippant way, just trying to get your message across? So think about that we don't need to use and commodify another group to promote <coughs> veganism and animal rights. Does everyone get that? We can use things in a positive way that don't necessarily have to hurt someone else. So here's something I want you to think about. When you're promoting veganism, when you're interacting online, you might want to take a photo of it, it's obviously very important. Um, so when you're promoting veganism, is your language positive or negative? Is it encouraging or is it discouraging? Is it empathetic or is it judgmental? Is it preaching or is it teaching? What sort of language are you using when you're talking about other countries? So <clears throat> some people use racist language when they're talking about, say, Japan and dolphins and whales, China and dog meat, Middle East and the live export. What about trigger words that you're using? Slave, rape, concentration camps. Some people may have gone through these sort of things and those sort of things that you're saying online to promote veganism might really affect those people. And what about, um, do you give unsolicited health advice or tell terminally ill or disabled people that veganism is going to cure them? Now every single one of these I've seen online at least once. And I don't think that's good enough. So I just wanted to mention, when I was talking about people going vegan, we want people to stay vegan. And there's been a lot of um, great research done by Humane Leagues Lab. Has anyone heard of that? If not, I really suggest you see what they've done and maybe follow their mailing list. Um, Nick Cooney from the States, he says he started Humane League a few years ago. He now does for animals he's working with now. Um, and he's written some really cool books as well. His latest one's How to Be Great at Doing Good, also Veganomics and Change of Heart. Now, his research has found, whether or not I agree with her, that animal welfare, this top, this top point, is the most effective way to get people to eat less meat. Okay? And health reasons are second best. Now, you know, this when I when I first went vegan, I went vegan because I didn't believe in killing another just for me to eat. And it was all about animals, animal ethics, animal rights sort of stuff. So I just thought, I'm gonna tell everyone about the stuff that I knew and they'll be vegan as well, won't they? Obviously. So I'm telling all these people the stuff that I found important, that was important to me, changed me to become vegan. But they didn't feel that it was important. So we need to work out what other people have as their priorities or what they're passionate about. So obviously animal welfare here, I have a few issues with animal welfare being promoted. I prefer to be focusing on animal rights and I prefer that. But this is the most effective way based on scientific data that's showing that people are staying vegan or at least eating less meat. So have a look at some of those stats. And vegans were only 1-2% to 2 of the population. 
That's, that number has not changed for 20 years. I know everyone gets all excited, oh my god, everyone knows about vegan nowadays. A lot more people aren't eating a plant-based diet. A lot more people are maybe eating plant-based meals. But I really don't think there's a lot more vegans. And people seem to be very confused about what a vegan is as well. Um, oh yeah, it's about gluten, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> No, not really. And there's all these terms, you know, high, high carb, low fat vegans, the oil free vegans, the sugar free vegans. Has anyone heard of the term vegan? It's a vegan that eats eggs, not vegan made. And then, you know, vegans, you know, vegans that eat honey, not vegan. So there's all these things that everyone's so confused about. And that's what's marketed the most is health stuff. It's all about food. That's what people are seeing in the mainstream media. It's health stuff, trying to lose weight, people trying to look hot in a bikini, white women mostly, thin women, that's the thing. We want to be focusing outside of those things, please. So find out what people want to, want to hear about. What are they passionate about? What is something that I say to you today that's going to make you go and share something? You know, you can think about environmental stuff, fitness stuff, health stuff. Environment, um, animal rights stuff. If someone got a dog, you know, you tell them about how intelligent pigs are in comparison to their dog. Um, and um, yeah, just find out why people are interested about stuff and work out how to talk to them and work out planting seeds. It's all about planting seeds. And that's just marketing in general. You find out what people want to do and you sell it to them. That's it. Um, and learn from other people. Like I said about the LGBTQI community, we want to learn from other movements because we, as much as we like to think we know everything, we really don't. And here's a few things I want you to keep in mind about what you share online. Every single thing you share online is what you have control over. And it's very scary to me with all the sexting and all the kids being able to share all these images and not really knowing what they're doing and the effects of it. So um, be aware of those things. Everything's a permanent reflection of you or your company or your brand and it's never going to be erased. I'm sure you've seen a lot of people ranting online, Kanye West is a good one, and you know, he might delete it a bit after or even um, Donald Trump. And they say ridiculous stuff. And it's always going to be that. It's always going to be something that happens. Um, make sure if you've got a few people that are posting on behalf of your company or your brand that every single person knows what your goals are, how you're meant to speak, the language you're using. Make sure everyone's not using abbreviations, that every single person that you're speaking to understands what you're talking about. Um, use correct grammar, punctuation, spelling, very important. Don't know why people don't seem to care about that, but it's very important. Um, and a good thing I like to say to people when they're thinking about whether or not they should post something. If I sent you a postcard, love postcards, love letters, just a hint. Um, if I send you a postcard in the mail, here to say the state, think about all the different types of people, how many people could actually read that postcard. Try and think that way with whatever you're sharing online. Whether or not you've got, you know, privacy settings on some of the things, you can still find it. Um, and if you want to say it on a postcard, also to someone's face. If I'm not going to say something to someone's face, I don't say it on. <coughs> or I say it to them first, then say it. Um, so consider what you're sharing and whether it's going to be negative or positive to you and your brand. And um, yeah, make sure everyone understands what you're talking about. Vegans don't only care about non-human animals. Let's all start acting like it. Too much meanness, too much people being rude and judgmental, and all systems of oppression need to be changed. This is really important. So online, let's be nice, let's be kind. And I don't know about you, but you know, if you're having a conversation and you disagree with someone, you don't have to call them a name. Don't have to be rude, don't have to be judgmental. Let's try and bring this to be online with. And remember, whether it's wrong or right, you might be the only vegan someone's coming into contact with. The amount of people who've said to me, I would have gone vegan 10 years earlier, but there was this guy who's such an idiot, rah, rah, rah. I didn't want to be a vegan because of that person. So really think about that. Whether or not you like it, 
you, the way you look, the way you dress, the way you wear, whatever, and the, what you're saying online, every single thing is important, and it's promoting veganism or not. And um, yeah, it reflects the whole movement. Start acting like it. I really like to talk about online etiquette, so we're going to talk about it today. And it just means being nice, being courteous to each other. And um, it shouldn't just be an afterthought. You need to commit to whatever you're saying online. And I think words are powerful. I'm very inspired by words. And um, you need to really believe that your words are powerful, because they are, and they can be, and they can really hurt someone. And um, if, you, if something you've written is going to embarrass someone, get them into trouble, compromise their privacy, stir up drama, keep it to yourself, or delete it. I see a lot of people, in particular this privacy thing, oh, we'll go and do something not so legal, let's take photos of ourselves doing it, and then let's post it on social media. Great idea, not everyone. Okay, so if you're doing that sort of stuff, maybe you need to be a bit more, you know, zipping the lip a bit. And um, think about other people. You know, just because you're tagging people and you've got something private online on Facebook, they're still going to be able to get that. Don't know if everyone's up to date with that Tinder um, issue that got um, may or may not have been jumped off the, the um, roof. So um, they've got all the Tinder um, interaction those two people have. So they've been able to get that. So nothing is private online is my point with that story. And so just be really careful what you're sharing. Here's my top 10, ten tips for online etiquette. Please feel free to take a photo. Um, my top tip just for online etiquette and just in general, in life, please. Act, don't react. I think that's simple. Um, keep private matters private. If you've got an issue with someone, why don't you DM them? The best thing, that's direct message. Um, or private message them and or maybe just go up to their face and say hey what you said to me the other day and I was having a chat about it. That's all you need to do. Um, use correct spelling, grammar, punctuation, be mindful and conscious of what you're sharing and who's going to read it. Um, keep your passwords safe and hard to guess. That's a whole another story, online security, but that's the very least you can do. I want you to be kind to each other. If you see someone being mean to someone, I want you to report it. It's very important. Everyone should be able to feel as though they're able to express themselves, whether or not you agree with them. If you use something someone's um, created, make sure you credit the person. I created this lovely um, example of my lettering, and if someone shared it, I'd like them to say, hey, Lee Chantel created this, it's awesome. <laughs> and um, everything you do online, I want you to take responsibility for it. Everything. So remember, information you share, it's the only thing <coughs> you have complete control over. Once you've shared it, you don't know what's going to happen from it. You don't know where it's going to go. You don't know who's going to react to it or interact or how it's going to be um, read. So use um, the internet and everything else you have, your blog, your website, all those things, as your own personal marketing tool. Yourself as a brand, your future success. Remember what we are saying before, social media, social. It's about cultivating relationships. And realistically, the, the brands that put in the effort to create excellent information, give people great information, they're the ones who do well over time, have the success in the long run, and who genuinely interact with their fans. I want you to keep up to date with what's happening. Attend meetings, get involved. Whether or not you agree with a group or people there, I don't 100% agree with any of the groups that exist, to be honest. You can always learn something from someone else. Always be open to learning more and go and attend a lot of things. And um, yeah, I'd suggest you, if you're starting out, meet as many like-minded people as you can. I created my tribe around when I was doing my, um, my vegan festivals, 2009-2010. Um, some of them I'm no longer friends with because just because they're vegan doesn't mean they're a nice person, you know. But it was good just to create my vegan tribe just for that moment. And then you work out whether or not you want to be friends with them long term. 
and really take some time out for yourself. I want you to focus on something that's just for you, something far removed from everything else you're interested in. For me, it's AFL. So, you know, something that's not related to veganism, feminism, environmental stuff, all that stuff, you know. Quite obsessed with AFL. Um, so here's some things I want you to think about doing today. Today, you can all do something right now. You can go online and share some of the information you learned today. You could change your email signature. You can follow some new pages, share something someone else has changed, has shared today. Comment on something, share a related video, and sign up to receive some emails from some of your favourite websites or blogs. And really, if you're in a position of influence, I want you to use that in a good way. Good way. Here's some things to remember. Do your own research. Do your own research. Don't just believe what people are saying. Investigate. Read more. It's very important. We need to read more. Not just what's online, not just social media. Sit down and read a book. Um, be genuine, be honest with everything you do. Think about creating the vegan community, your vegan tribe. Um, keep your mind on your goals, be focused. And really believe we're all part of that change that we need. That we're all working on it in a positive way. Focus on the things that connect us rather than things that don't connect us. Because there's always going to be reasons that we're not going to like someone or we're not going to get along with someone. Not, I don't know one, maybe I know one or two people that I agree mostly with. We both agree mostly with the things. But there's always something that we disagree with. There's always going to be that. And it look would be boring if everyone thought the same things anyway. We need to lead by example, we need to be consistent, and I want you to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Remember, we want to promote more positive stuff, we want to focus on encouraging people, we want to focus on education and planting seeds, not just trying to convert people. We want to inspire other people. We want to remember kindness and always remember compassion. It's really easy to be vegan nowadays. It's really easy to stay vegan. These are the things I want you to focus on. And I want you to be the best vegan you can be. And let's all start from now. And here's how you can connect with me. That's my vegalavegan.net website. That's all the social media channels. I have Instagram now. Um, my Lee Chantel website and all the social media channels for that. Also Instagram. So please have a look at that. And my Vegan Athletes book has its own website as well. If you're in, um, if anyone's going to be at World Vegan Day um, next week, I think. She was just been to Bali. Everything's flying by. Um, yeah, next weekend's World Vegan Day in Melbourne. If anyone's able to go, I'll be selling my um, Vegan Athletes book at the Prana On store. So if you wanted to get a book or you want to get it for someone, make sure you check it out. But I really hope everyone's learned something today. And if you have learned something, I'd like you to share it with someone else so that they've learned something else as well. And I hope you've got something out of it. And we've got a few minutes for questions, so I hope you've got something to do. Yeah, I hope you liked it.